It's true. I'm addicted to anything to do with consciousness, spirituality, figuring out the answers to the big questions like why we're here, what it really means to be human, how we can use our minds in a way that um, makes us feel at peace, solving problems, transcending the physical. All of these things have always intrigued me. That's why I became a crew member when I was 20. I flew away as a stewardess. You know, we really wanted to find out where UFOs were from because I'd seen three of them up close. Figured the pilots could tell me. Of course, right away, I found out about the cover-ups. Nobody could talk about certain things. And um, But we used to have great crew parties back then in the 60s because usually the pilots and the, and the stewardesses were all laying over the same hotels and we'd get together in someone's room. Someone would, would always take the mirror off the wall that was hanging over the desk, you know, in the hotel room because um, there was this talk that we had spies that were watching us and um, we, even, we even felt like maybe we had crew members that belonged to the CIA back then. There has always been this... Um, feeling that we're being watched in the, in America. You know, this was back in the days of the Vietnam War in the 1960s. And there was a lot of thing, a lot going on back then with people being polarized for, against, people that like war, people that are pacifists, can't understand why you'd even want to start a war in the first place. I mean, what a crazy thing to do on the planet. But there we were back in the 60s. And um, the reason I got addicted to consciousness was because right away I met this man, you know, that taught me how to visualize. And I was able to manifest the first thing I wrote down on my index card and kept by my bed. It was a move to New York and I manifested a lovely place to live. And then I started manifesting some other things that I wrote down on my card and it was so easy and effortless, I began to realize that just like the genie in the bottle, my inner world, my imagination, and how I used it was allowing me to bring into my experience things that I desired. As I moved along on the metaphysical path and read a lot of books and studied a lot of things and you know, experiences would come up that I'd need to address, um, I found out that my mind is not in my bo in my brain. Mind is not in the brain. We are non-local. That's why we can actually connect to other people telepathically. We can send messages. We can remote view events. We can have precognitive dreams and see the future sometimes. I think a lot of people have done that. I've done it myself. Sometimes they just come out of nowhere. If you're emotionally attached to something, it, you're more apt to have that kind of precognitive experience with the person or the events. Like um, I, I would have dreams about airplanes and things that would happen. And then sure enough, they would happen or people that I knew and things would happen just as I dreamed it or similar. There is no time so we can actually go into the future and sometimes see on a certain timeline things that will naturally unfold. We all have free will though. There's always a way to change that timeline if you want to. And um, I really am addicted to anything to do with consciousness. I've studied as many of the teachers as I could find some of my favorites, I told you I started off with Gurdjieff. He taught me how to watch my thoughts and be an observer and remember myself rather than just getting constantly caught up in the emotion, the highs and the lows of life, but to be able to step back and observe and see that um, nothing really needed to move me. It was my thinking that made it happen the way I reacted to it my perception, and if I didn't like something that I was seeing in the three-dimensional world, it was an opportunity to change it in my consciousness to something that I preferred. And many times you will see 
amazing things happen in the three-dimensional world. I have seen my car miraculously get fixed. Um, you know, things appear when I go shopping that I need very effortlessly. People that I need to meet show up when I start really focusing on the kind of people I need to have in my life. Um, it it give places to live, jobs that you need. You can manifest whatever you put your attention on. You know that expression where your attention goes, energy flows. Well, that means you are creating with your attention the energy in the 3D world that is your personal manifestation. Now, because it has to cooperate with other people in your experience, you don't get things usually exactly the way you picture them, but it can be pretty close. I mean, I've seen things show up in my life that were almost exactly, but they're even better than what I imagined. You know, like one time I put a black Subaru legacy car on my vision board. I ended up going to the Subaru dealer and getting a black Mercedes that was available for the right price. I visualized living in a mansion in my own quarters. Didn't know what city. Apartment showed up through a friend of a friend. And um, I moved into this apartment in a mansion. Um, wanted to get a full-time job. Visualized myself feeling like I already got it. Ended up getting it. Years ago, I used to um, think about, oh, maybe I should do some modeling because that was a thing back then. It still is, but I would visualize myself getting hired by people before I would even go visit them. And everybody would always hire me. I got hired by the Playboy Club, didn't take the job as a bunny, but they hired me after I got into the costume. I got hired by an agent in San Francisco and one in Boston when I was living back east. And I did jobs for them, working car shows and print work and different, um, you know, tea room modeling, different jobs like that. Fun, interesting, always meet interesting people. And um, visualized reading the news, walked into a news station and he hired me like that. And I turned that one down too. I went to live in Hawaii instead. Um, I really couldn't bear the thought of talking about negative news every every day. That kind of freaked me out. I like to stay positive. So um, that's what I'm addicted to. Positive, uplifting, spiritual, metaphysical, teachings that you can sink your teeth into and get results. That's why I became a Silver Ultramind trainer back in 2004. I've trained quite a few thousand people in how to get down to that alpha level. I dug deeply into the teachings of Mary Baker Eddy and gave tours at the church in Boston, the mother church, um, meeting people from all over the world, having fascinating conversations with people from all different backgrounds and religions and comparing notes on, you know, what you know about enlightenment and um, spirituality. And I've learned there's a commonality in all the religions. They're just different paths leading to the same place. And we're all different. We all have different types of cultures and personalities and ways of looking at things. So it makes sense that there's a lot of different paths to the same place, that oneness. Once you get to that level of consciousness where you are one with the divine, the source energy, the God within you, you can really solve any problem that comes along. And that's why you get that deep inner peace, the peace that passeth understanding, because you know that no matter what, there's always a solution. And that's a good thing, because when you know that, it, with every bone in your body, you're at peace.